I am strong. I am fearless. I am courageous. I am beautiful. I can do all things. I am created to be me. I am a woman. And I am funky. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Sheila E. TV. Again, a beautiful, beautiful Saturday. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited about today's show. The genius of P-Funk's founder lies in his ability to motivate and collaborate. More than 170 people have played in Funkadelic and its alter ego band Parliament, commonly referred to as P-Funk. And that doesn't even include the 20 or so bands that have spun off from that. It's incredible. Anyway, did you know that he was a hairdresser in his early days? That's why he had all that crazy hair. He did his own hair. Hello? <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, the man who has created the funk, Theo Jorge Clinton. Ladies and gentlemen, Uncle George Clinton. What it be like? What it be like, girl? What's happening? How you this doing? Pan this pandemic's almost over, ain't it? Ooh, I hope so. My God. Yeah. This has been no. crazy. No, we breaking out of here any day now. <laughs> any I heard, day now. I heard that any day, like out of here. I don't think I've ever seen you be home this long in my life either. I like, ain't never seen me be home this long <laughs> in my life either. <laughs> <laughs> My God, but you know, but every day was thankful. Yeah, there you go. That's okay, amazing. Bless. Feeling good though. No, you look incredible. I'm so happy for you. You do too. What you talking about? Hey, it's you got funk. You got style. There you. <laughs> That's all we need is the funk. Talk about okay. the funk. I don't know what year it was, and you can probably tell me what year. I think this was the first time I saw um, Parliament Funkadelic. Uh, in Oakland first and Berkeley, but two different places. But you guys came with the mothership. Who? Okay. You talking about the Coliseum? Yep. Wow. That could have been 76, 77, and 78. Right. Yep. We did, we did all of those in Ooh. Oakland. Oh, that was the live. Matter of fact, that's the live album. Uh, Earth Tour. Oakland. Are you out there? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah that was... That was a uh, that was um, it there. That was the really that was it. <laughs> that tour there that was like the first tour of the mothership, and it was probably like the fifth date. Really? That was like the fifth date of the of the show. You it know? was and amazing. Slide was on the show. Oh, I was yep. there. I was there on the on the side by the bleachers, as close to the front of the stage as I could get, but that I could afford back then. But it was it was crazy. Like we had never seen anything like that in our lives because you had all the like psychedelic, you know, the uniforms, everyone wearing their own thing and who they yeah. were, you know, and then the mothership and then just like Oakland and Berkeley and then, uh, you know, the funk and then Sly and uh, it just it was just insane. That, that was a, that was another one of those moments where it was a quantum leap being taken. You know, when the mothership landed, that was a whole new thing. I mean, Slidner was already doing it like that from Woodstock. Yeah. But when we got the mothership, that was the definition of where that, where that was going. Yeah. You know, and right on, we rode that thing right on into, right on into hip hop. Yeah. Our, la our last gigs was like, you know, at Woodstock, 99. We landed wow. the mothership there. Wow. You know, and that was like, yeah, that was a moment. But I tell you an interesting time. I, we came to see George Duke and um, and you was playing drums. Yeah. Me and Bootsy came. Yeah. 
And that was the first time we had heard reach for it. Right. And, and you know, in that particular style, we thought we had that on lockdown. <laughs> you know, that was that was what we was doing with Bootsy at that time. Yeah. You know, I knew you as a percussionist. Yeah. But then you was on them drums killing it. <laughs> I say, what? The, and the next time, you know, was out at Paisley. Yeah. You know, and that was like, <laughs> That was like a college campus. I love that, you know, being yeah. out there. Oh you know. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I forget the the when you guys came to see George, so it's funny because when he did reach for it, I had think I had just gotten in the band and um it sounded like you guys to me. And and it, actually it was yeah, and it was like, <laughs> wait a minute, did did Uncle George write this? Well, I wasn't calling you Uncle George then, but I said, did George Clinton write this? He's like, no, I wrote this. I'm like, whoa, okay. They, they had that shit <laughs> down. It was, I mean, we, we heard it on the radio. I said, like, wait a minute, Bootsy, did you do something with somebody else? Because <laughs> that, that was so on it. I mean, they beat the one up. Yeah, that they was, did. That was See, the, the one, Duke, exactly. The, oh, it was, I mean, it was the serious concept of the one. Yes. Matter of fact, and then, um, you know, reach for a dookie stick. Yep. Yeah, no, it was kicking. But, yeah, we were just like, you know, you guys coming to the Bay and playing in Berkeley and then, you know, mixing all the different bands. And every time I saw you, it was like, okay, here's 15 people on stage. Well, wait, no, here's 30 people on stage. And <laughs> it, just, it just got bigger and bigger, but more, it, it was eclectic, exotic, um, psychedelic, you know, and and it's crazy because some of the terms I have written them down, some of the terms that people talked about you guys being like electro funk, um, avant funk, progressive soul, uh, <laughs> funk, funk psychedelic, you know, Afro, Afro, Afro futurism, yeah, just all kind of stuff. And it's crazy because I think that you guys were the ones that made up all these names because you were coming up lyrically with some profound stuff that was was so futuristic but at the same time understanding what you were saying you're going like wait what what did they just say yeah well that's funk for you funk, it leaves a lot of room for putting your own interpretations your own coloring on it you know and do we had a lot of help at least i did with uh especially with funkadelic albums pedro bell yeah once, once i told him the concept of what i was talking about his verbiage of it, his slang, mm -hmm. you know, he was from Chicago, but he had a, a sideways type of angle to his slang that mm -hmm. was, had, it had tinges of psychedelic in it, you know, like the, the um, Bay Area with those uh, Zap comic books, mm -hmm. you know, that, that kind of air about yes. it. But at the same yes. time, he was from the ghetto of Chicago. So it had a flow to it. When he interpreted what I said, it had another another whole reality to it. You could read the album covers for weeks in and week out, and and relate to it and don't know what you're relating to. Exactly, but it feels good. Exactly. You know? Even being a part of it, I still have fun reading that shit. <laughs> We do, you know? too. We do, too. We would sit there just like, okay, let's dissect this album cover. What does this mean? What does it, What were they thinking about? Absolutely. That's art. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we was having a lot of fun doing it. And I think the other thing is we appreciated so many styles of music. Yeah. I did. I mean, I appreciated anything that worked. Anything I saw out there that was working, I'm into why is it working? You know, you learned that at Motown. That was one thing Barry said. Even if it sounds corny, figure out why it's working. Right, exactly. And, you know, once you figure that out, you can appreciate it and you'll be able to have more ways to, to go about making records. Yeah. You know, I appreciate it, especially during the 60s. You had a lot out there. Yeah. You know, for Motown stacked Beatles and, you know, rock and roll. The, and see, I'm from the, basically starting in the 50s when, um, Tito Puente was my favorite thing of Newark, New Jersey on R&B station. Okay, Coco Seco wow. was my favorite song. Wow. So, so, you know, Mambo was the way we kept from, from gang fighting. Wow. You know, you seen West Side Story? Right. That yeah. was basically Newark, New Jersey for real from wow. 57 to 59, 60. 
That was the way it was. So all of that kind of music, when I got a chance, I threw everything in there. I didn't have no special bag. I didn't want to be in no bag. Yeah. When they wanted you to get another hit single real quick. Yeah. I I refused to try to do the same song twice because we couldn't. We we always played by vibe. Yeah. You know, yeah. you get to something like Atomic Dog, you can't do that twice. Heck no. There's only yeah. one of those. Don't know what we did when we did Flashback. <laughs> you know, it just... You know, one song I really felt that was going to work from the beginning and did work was Knee D. Yeah. You know, that one I had to sing for a long time, a cappella in my mind, so I knew uh, how I wanted to go, but I didn't think it was going to be no commercial record. But knowing Junie, you know, from No Higher Players, him putting his spin on it, it's, it's going to be commercial. Wow. <laughs> he just had that, that touch for that song. Yeah. And I sung an acapella to him. He, he come back playing the whole track. Wow. All I had to do was drop the Michael in on solo. Really? Yeah. Well, Jim I played didn't all know he... of He played all of that. Wow. You know. He's ama- done, he was amazing. And my God. You know, but mm-hmm. we had a bunch of people, you know, in the back. Go to, I could do that all night with the different people in the band. Yeah. yeah. You know, from Bernie to Eddie. To, Ooh. You know, Bootsy to Gary to, you know, yeah. Glenn going, you know, you, yeah. you can't, yeah. you can't, you know, I can go all night doing that. Yeah. You know. And how but, did, um, how did you get, how did you get like Maceo and, and, and Dennis in the band? How did they become part okay, of Okay, well, Bootsy, get, when I got Bootsy, uh-huh. he brought Maceo and Fred and them from James Brown. Uh-huh. Bone, we had, we had seen you know, in Baltimore, you know, when, when we first started. Yeah. But him getting with Bootsy, that made him closer to us. So that was just like, okay, we all knew each other and then as it was coming together. But coming through Bootsy or through Malia Franklin from yeah. Parlette, yeah. from all of them, yeah. Bootsy, Bone, Macy, Fred, yeah. Yeah. you know, and that's the way it was. And once you're a part of it, yeah. It's hard to get out of it. You know, yep. <laughs> I don't care where you go and play. Dennis came, <laughs> Dennis came right out of school with Bone. Wow. Bone brought up D- Peanut, Dennis, oh. a, whole bu- a whole bunch of them, you know. The horn players, Greg, Ooh. two Gregs, and, and Ben, yeah. all of them came with Bone. You know, when it comes to P-Funk, there's Jersey, there's Detroit, there's Baltimore. And then wow. you got... Everywhere else. That's amazing. That's, there's so much history. Gosh. So having so many people in the band and all these incredible people coming in, how did you then decide to start pairing people off into different bands? Like, well, you know, everybody when they in the, whether they're working as a roadie or anything, they, everybody's a musician in their mind. Mm-hmm. They want that, you know. And the band was getting so big on the road, it couldn't just be Parliament. <laughs> it couldn't just be Funkadelic. <laughs> and then as it grows, then it, his Bootsy, he came as a Bootsy to play with us. By, and next thing we know, no, he's a Bootsy. He ain't no Funkadelic. Yeah. He needs his whole crew. And once I did a few things with him and his brother, then I said, you got to put a band together, mm-hmm. you know, and we, and we call it stretching out a rubber band. <laughs> and so he, he went to work and got boned them. And once that happened, then you got the girls there. Got the brides <laughs> a deal at, at Atlantic. Paulette a deal with uh, Casablanca. Wow. Eddie Hazel a deal with Warner Brothers. Bernie a deal with Ariston. Fred and Maceo a deal with Atlantic. You know, the thing was to get everybody a deal. Yeah. You know, that was that was the whole thing to get everybody around there to make it pay for itself. Mm-hmm. You know, and and they was they walked right into it. when we went out with the mothership, Bootsy, ourselves, the brides and Parlette, we had our own production right there. We didn't need nobody opening for us. <laughs> That's true. You look at it like this: you got you got James Brown influence. Yeah. You got Motown influence. You got a uh, P-Funk influence. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of music. It is. 
It is. It's incredible. I, and, that, and like I said, the, the, as many times as I could, almost every time you guys came to the Bay Area, we went to see you because it was, we were so influenced, you know, and when those songs came out, we're just like, well, we got to go see y'all play. We felt like, I'm sure like every city does, you feel like this band was created in the Bay. <laughs> <laughs> we can, we're reclaiming y'all as no. This started here. It started here. You know, we just felt that. Well, you know, we was out at Paisley Park. Everybody did. I saw out all the musicians. I saw that everybody. I saw. I said, "Don't you play? Don't you play with Sheila? Don't you play with Sheila? E? <laughs> everybody out there in Prince's band had played with you one time or another." It was mostly I my mean, band, and then he'd take them from me. <laughs> all of them, everybody. I said, I said you got to chill this whole band out of here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot of them oh from my. the Bay, because Bay yeah, Area, good musicians. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. we had fun. We had, that, that was a fun place. That was fun. It was a lot of I fun. I mean, from the, the little tailor shop upstairs. Yeah, the oh, my gosh. Oh, they kept you looking good. You oh, Chris. that was heaven. That was I heaven. I know, boy, the suits I say not. You was probably one of the only ones that really knew, to me, knew how to wear that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, I told Prince, I said, you better check her style out, too. <laughs> I said, because she, she's wearing that. Shit. Oh, my God. I love uh, them people. They, they, they made some nice stuff. That was yeah. fun. That was fun. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! No, it's you have imparted so much good knowledge, and even things that you have created and made yourself. That you've created a genre of music, a a movement. It is a movement. It is a lifestyle that we so Thanks, appreciate. Rich. Oh my God! How many? How many records? Do you know how many records you've done? Oh hell no! You know what they they. they they pretty much count them now because they're doing all the copyright recaptures. Yeah. And so I'm looking at all the stuff we got back and I'm finding songs that I forgot I even did. See? And then a lot of them is coming out now that I did. I, I, was, like, I was under the influence that I did them, so I don't remember doing them. <laughs> 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 so I believe of, that. I believe a that. A lot of them, because, you know, you used to just... Just do stuff wherever you ended up in the studio. You just go yeah. off. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you know, you never know where. And I found that you never know when it's going to pop up. It'll pop right. up. You work, you can work it out then. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. Exactly. You work it out then, you know. But uh, you got to hear the different people tell their stories of how they sampled a knee deep. <laughs> Some people just used it, you know, for every song they did. Yeah. They used a different part of it. Yeah. Yeah, and the, another song a lot of people don't know that we did was more bounce to the ounce, right? Zap. Yeah, we did that, and that's one of the the um, all time favorite sample records too. Wow, that's probably one of the first samples because that record itself is a sample. It is. It is the the bass line from that record on that record. I I took that from another song Roger had called. Uh, funky bounce. Oh yeah, just the bass line. Uh huh. And I looped it, and you had to li literally do it physically. You had to cut the tape every right. few <laughs> inches, and then tape it together. Yeah. Do, 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 do. And tape. We had tape and, and scotch tape. Um, exactly. You know, across oh. the board. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And then you put it around the two track, around a pencil, and let it loop itself. Yeah. That was like before hip hop had started. And, and so that that that's a loop itself, and we wow. did everything else. He played everything else over top of that. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Well, uh, that's how much we all love. Everyone loves your sound and what you have created with all these amazing people. It's just incredible. Well, appreciate you. I appreciate you more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Uncle okay. George. I love you. Thank you Same for being here, with me today. Take care. All right. I'm gonna interview you the next time. Okay, please. I don't okay. know if I have anything to say. <laughs> oh, you got stuff to say. <laughs> okay. All right. I love you. All right. Take care, babe. Bye. Uncle George, you are so amazing. Gosh, I can't believe... 
I could talk to you for another three hours, seriously. Two hours, how about a full week? <laughs> you are the master of the mothership connection. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> you are truly loved by all of us. Really, you are. And we thank you so much for your contribution to music. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being a part of Sheila E. TV. We'll see you next week as we sign off. I'm going to try to make this. I almost did. Ah, oh, they're going straight. Not even close. Whatever. Well, all right. Star Child here, yeah. citizen of the universe, recording angel. We are returning to claim the pyramid, partying on the mothership. I am the mothership connection. Get down in 3D, a light year through me. With me and you know it ain't nobody but me and the boys, Sheila E and the girls, taking the roof off of this sucker. Put your hands in the air. Shut up. Hit me. Listen at this gym phone.